So one relaxation to the sequential consistency model is called the weak ordering. It's a relaxed model. So what does this model say? It says that the memory operations are classified into two categories, data operations and synchronization operations. The intuition is that the one segment of data operations, the operations that are happening in one data operation before some synchronization operation do not affect the data operations that are happening after the synchronization operation. What does it allow the compiler to do? So the reordering memory operations to data regions between synchronization operations does not typically affect the correctness of the program. So what does it mean that within the segment of data operations, I can move instructions around without impacting the correctness of the program. All right. So now what can the compiler do? Now within a data segment, so you'll have some data operations. So these are all data operations. And then you will have some sync operation. Then again, you'll have some data operations and then maybe again, you have some sync operations. Okay. And now the compiler knows that it sees this sync operation. It's aware of these synchronization operations and it sees these data operations and it knows that it can move these instructions around as it wishes. It's not going to impact the correctness of the program. That's the agreement between the programmer and the system. Okay. That within the data operations, I'm allowed to reorder as I wish as long as I don't see a sync operation. I should not reorder across the sync operations, right? So I shouldn't move any instruction from here to here or here to here. It should not cross the sync boundary, but between these instructions, I can reorder, right? And I can keep the values in the registers as long as I don't hit the sync operation, right? If I, when I hit the sync operation, then I need to be careful about a lot of things. Whatever I have in my registers, I need to write them all back to the memory, right? any updates which are pending in any write buffers or something need to complete, right? So a lot of things have to be taken care of when the sync operation happens, because at the point of the sync operation, the state of the processor has to be consistent with the memory. So synchronization operations enforce program order by disallowing reordering of code around them, right? And essentially a temporary view is maintained between synchronization operations. So it's, it's between the synchronization operations there may be a view that the, that particular processor has, which is not the same view as any other processor of that memory, right? I may have a local IE in the register, which the other processor is not able to see. So it's a temporary view. Okay. What is the open MP consistency model? Well, it is the weak ordering with further relaxation. So we'll talk about that. But first let's understand that with respect to weak ordering, there is a key synchronization operation this is called flush. Okay. What it prevents is it prevents reordering of memory accesses across the flush instruction. All right. You can give a list of variables to the flush instruction. So what does that mean? That means that suppose I am doing something with A, reading, writing something, I do something with A, I do something with B, right? And then I say flush A. And then I do something with A, I do something with B. So this flush ensures that I cannot reorder the instructions which access A across the flush instruction. I cannot move this instruction here. I cannot move this instruction here. These are not allowed. What is allowed? So moving this instruction before this instruction is allowed. I can do that. I can move this B before this A axis. I'm allowed to do that. Okay. As a matter of fact, I can even move this B down here. Why? Because this flush only wants A to be synchronized, right? So it does not care about B. If I say flush A comma B, then even this will not be allowed. Right? Even B cannot be moved across this. If I say flush A comma B, it will ensure that all these instructions get executed, then flush gets executed, then all these instructions get executed. Yeah, I mean, there are lots of other things that you have to consider before moving any instruction around, right? That the compiler figures out. So we are not getting into that discussion, that what all the compiler is allowed to do. The compiler will take care of a lot of things before moving any instruction around. It has to take care of a lot of things, dependencies, right? And, and, and a whole lot of stuff. So we're not getting into that discussion. We're just saying that if the compiler wants to move this around, is he allowed to move it around or not? And this flush instruction says, no, you're not allowed to move it around. Clear? 
let's try to fix this code decker's algorithm for critical sections this is similar to the code we saw except for now it's actually what it's meant for critical sections right so where should i put flush instructions in order to ensure that this code works properly and what is the flush instruction that it should use Suppose that we are no longer in the sequential consistency model, right? Now we are in the weak ordering model, where now the compiler is allowed to move things around. Now I am asking the question in OpenMP, where do I have to introduce the flush instruction so that the compiler does not mess this up? Otherwise it's going to move this flag one down and then both of them are going to enter the critical section together. We don't want that to happen. Between critical section and the if statement, here. This doesn't help, right? If both of them enter the if condition, the damage has already been done. Between if and the assignment, yeah. So I need to add a flush here and I need to add a flush here. What is the flush instruction I need to add? Flush flag, <laughs> flag two. that's the easiest way out, right? You don't know which one to do, so just do all of them. <laughs> That, that's the safe way around. So what about this? Is this code good? Well, I've already written incorrect code, so obviously it's not good. What's wrong with this code? So remember flush, how does flush work? Flush ensures that operations involving that variable or that list of variables is not moved around the flush. Right? So what can go wrong? It won't reach why? So you understand this is not a barrier, right? You understand what a barrier is. Barrier is where both processes must, must come together before proceeding further. This is not a barrier. A flush is just saying make the memory consistent with what I have. That's all, nothing else. It doesn't care where the other processor is. So, what the compiler may do is that it may pick up these two instructions and move them down. That's perfectly valid, right? Why? It has not moved memory accesses involving flag 1 beyond the flush for flag 1. It has not moved the instructions involving flag 2 beyond the flush for flag 2. But it's moved them both together. That's allowed. The compiler is allowed to do that. Right? So you see the problem? And now both of them can enter the critical section by the same sequence of code instructions that we saw earlier. Okay? So what's the correct code? Flush flag one flag two. <laughs> right? That's the correct code. Now it cannot move both of them down because then it will not maintain the order between the flush of flag two and the if condition of flag two. Right? So you need to go back and just look at these examples and study them very, very carefully, right? The more you look at it, the more you'll understand why it is the way it is, okay? So we said OpenMP is a weak consistency model and there is further relaxations which we haven't come to yet. But the crux is that we've written so many OpenMP programs and we never bothered about flush. Why is that? We never talked about flush. And still we wrote programs and they ran fine and everything seemed to work fine. Why is that? Because OpenMP implicitly puts flush instructions at various places. Where all does it put the flush? At barriers, wherever it sees a barrier, OMP barrier. Entry exit from all the parallel regions, right? Wherever the parallel work sharing sections are there, hash pragma OMP for, right? Hash pragma OMP single. It puts flush instructions around that. Critical sections, it puts flush instructions around that. So it carefully puts all these flush instructions. If you are accessing your data properly, then you will not face any issues. You won't need explicit use of flush. Why? Because when you are accessing a shared variable, if you are updating a shared variable, you will use a critical section. So that critical section ensures that the flush is happening. 
right? So if, if you're careful about all your data accesses, whenever you're accessing shared variables that are using critical sections or atomic, right? So what are the other implicit flushes around locks and entry to and exit from atomic, right? Hash pragma, OMP, atomic, remember atomic instructions. If whenever you're accessing global variables, if you're careful, shared variables, if you're careful to use hash pragma, OMP, atomic, hash pragma, OMP, critical, right? Then you will never land into the trouble where you need to start using flush. As a matter of fact, using flush is discouraged, right? You should just always carefully use hash pragma atomic and hash pragma critical and so on, right? So when will you encounter this issue? We saw this Decker's algorithm, right? So when do you have to write this flush? Look, I'm updating a shared variable flag one and I'm not saying critical. I mean, I'm writing code. I have not put a critical section around flag one. I have not said it as atomic. I mean, I'm trying to bypass the constructs that OpenMP has built for me, critical and atomic. So some people do this because they want to write really, really optimized code, right? So then they have to use flush, but they have to use it carefully. Okay. So most of the time you don't need to worry about flush. That's the crux. Couple of reasons why OpenMP consistency model is weaker than weak ordering. One is that synchronization operations on disjoint variables are not ordered with respect to each other. That we saw, right? The flush for A did not ensure anything for B, memory accesses to B. It did not say that they cannot cross this boundary, right? They cannot be reordered around the flush. That's one way it is weaker than weak ordering. Another important thing, which is more of an advanced concept is that uh, the open MP consistency model, the model that it offers is the release consistency model. That's a further relaxation of weak consistency. In this, what happens is that the synchronization accesses are further divided into two kinds of operations, acquire and release. Acquire are kind of operations that happen when you try to get a lock and release operations happen when you try to unlock, right? And now what this model does is that for acquire, it ensures that the acquire must complete before all following memory accesses. So what happens when you try to lock and unlock, right? You're doing something over here. These are the instructions you're trying to protect within the lock. Suppose I have an instruction here and suppose I have an instruction after the unlock. Will it matter if one of these instructions before the lock completes after the lock has been acquired? No. What is more important is that the instruction inside the lock must not take place before the lock has been acquired. That is the critical thing, right? So that is going one level beyond just ensuring that memory is consistent. It is saying that when an acquire operation happens, then the acquire operation must complete before all following memory accesses. And similarly, when a release operation happens, then all memory access operations that are before the release must complete before the release happens, right? All these instructions, which are between the lock and unlock, between the lock and unlock, they must complete before the release happens, before the lock is released, okay? And accesses after release in program order need not wait for release, right? So some of these instructions, some of these red instructions may even get executed before the lock has been released, does not matter, right? These blue instructions between the lock and unlock are the ones that we really care about. Okay, so this allows even more optimizations to be done by the compiler, by the runtime system and so on. So it's, it relaxes the constraints even further. You understand this is important, right? Because if the compiler and the runtime system don't do these optimizations, your code is going to run very, very slowly. Okay.